broke out the uh, amounts to be per check rather than per journal entry in the general ledger so that we can match them out to uh, the bank uh, statement. That's going to be one of the common type of problems that uh, we do face within the bank reconciliation. We want to make sure that we are inputting the same grouping into our books as uh, the bank uh, reconciliation, the bank statement, so that it is easier for us to just uh, tick and tie them out and see which you know amounts are tying out to the bank. So it's, if we don't do that, we can still reconcile, but it's a little bit more difficult because then we have to we have to combine amounts and and find which ones match out. And it's and I'd rather just have it uh, be checking ticking and tying them for an example like this. What we're going to do now is just tick and tie everything out. I start from going from the bank statement to our books, meaning I'm going to check everything off on the bank statement and see if it has cleared the books and then go the other way, go from the books back to the bank statement to double check everything. Before we start that, we're going to have our two components of uh, the bank reconciliation. One's going to be the bank side and one's going to be the book side. And so we'll start with the beginning balances. So in terms of the bank begin beginning balance, it's going to be the ending balance here, but it's the beginning balance for our reconciliation. This is where we are at before we put any reconciling items in. So this is the balance, in other words, as of February 28th on the bank statement. And that's going to be 99296. And then we have the book balance. This is the book balance at the end of the month, but at uh, the beginning of our bank reconciliation and that's going to be 99116 so at the end of the day we're going to get to this ending balance down here and hopefully they will then match and if we tick and tie everything out we think that they should have to match now just to note where we have started here uh just to get an idea of this remember that all of this blue stuff that's the stuff we checked off already that should match out to the beginning balance now that's all the cleared stuff that has happened thus far within the business. So if we highlight that, this plus this plus this, minus this, minus this, minus this, plus this, plus this, minus this, minus this, I'm holding, I'm letting go, I'm holding down control and clicking on the blue items, blue item, blue item, blue item. And then just looking down here and letting Excel sum that up, it sums it up to 109,415. The blue items that we checked off, in other words, are our cleared balance. Those are our beginning balance. So that matches our beginning balance that has already cleared. The blue items are here then we're going to record our activity and check off all the activity that happened uh in the bank statement as of february in our books as of january and february depending on when we wrote the check so we wrote some of these in january some of them in february which have been cleared in uh, february here on the bank statement let's take a look at that we'll go through the deposits first and we're just going to tick and tie this information out we have the 956 on the deposit. And the only thing we have other than the deposit really is the date. And that date is not going to match our date because we wrote the, the check date as of the point in time we made the deposit. And it takes a little bit of time for it to clear the bank. So note the date will always be closed, but sometime after uh, the, the deposit date in our books. And that's why it's important to get the deposits matched up correctly so that uh, we can match this stuff out as easy as possible. I'm just going to highlight these. I'm going to make them green. Say we found that and we found that. So we're good there. Here's the 12, uh, 250. We're just going to do the deposits first. That's going to be something that we wrote in February. So we found that. I'm going to highlight that here. We're going to highlight that there and say we found that. Here's the 825. I see it on both sides. So we're going to say here it is there and here it is there. So those are going to be the deposits and yes we have this other one but we're going from here to here now so i'm not going to worry about this other deposit yet what we're going to do now is go through the checks and here's the check we usually have a little bit more detail we still have the date but we also have the check number now our uh, general ledger isn't showing the dates and the check numbers because it would get too um, long and messy if we had the problem with that there so we tried to shorten it out but uh, we typically would have a, a little bit more information in terms of check number when marking this stuff off in a, a computer system. And that can give us a little more help. Note the dates will be even further off, however, because we wrote the check and the date at the point in time we wrote the check. And it takes a lot longer for a check to clear the bank. So it, it, the dates here are going to be much later. Uh, so we'll go ahead and check these off. So here's the 11. 
We see it there. I'm just going to make it green. There's the 11. There's the 500. And I know this is a tedious task, but uh, it is. This is how it's done. And then there's the 500. And there's the 360. Here's going to be the 360. There's the 3539. Here's the 3539. There's the 630. Here's the 630. So we've tied all those out and all, that's all information that we actually wrote in January and didn't cl clear the bank until February. Then we have the 1,359 that's going to be up here. So I'm going to highlight that and that's going to be this item. Then we have the 168. So we had to skip them. Notice they're not quite in the same order. That's okay. That could happen on the bank statement. That's fine. That's the one th just because of when it depends on how the bank statement is being ordered. If it's ordered by date, then uh, that's likely to happen because it's it's likely that uh, different people deposited their checks at different rates. So we're going to say this is going to be this item. Here it is here. We have the 123. There it is there. Here it is here. We've got the 380 or the 830 here and here. We've got the 648 that's going to be here and it's a skipped a few. So we didn't see a couple of those. That's okay. It's not in order. We're going to just check them all off. And then we have the 3513 here and here. So now we've, we've tied everything out that are the checks. Then we have these two items, the withdrawals and the bank service charges. Those are going to be items we don't see over here. I don't see the withdrawals and we don't see the bank service charges. And so those are going to be items that um, we're going to have to adjust for. So I'm going to head, I'm going to make these yellow and say that I don't see these over here. And I'm going to have to do something about that and, um, and see what happens or see what we can do about it. And then we'll go from the other side. We found all these highlighted ones. Let's see, double check the ones that have not been highlighted. We have this deposit here. It's not over here. So I'm going to make that yellow too. And say we got to do something about that. These two are here. I don't see them over here. So we're going to make that yellow. These two are over here. I don't see them over here on the bank uh, statement. We'll make that yellow. And this 